Rise and shine, humans, I'm Jason. Today, we're going to unravel the mysteries of the bedtime brain with a side order of science. So grab your favorite blanket and let's cozy up because today we're going to embark on a journey through the nocturnal landscape of the human mind where dreams reign supreme and brain waves dance to their own beat. Let's start with the basics. What exactly happens when we hit the hay? Well, it turns out that sleep isn't just a time for catching Zs. It's a complex dance of brain waves and biological processes that keeps us refreshed and rejuvenated. Now, the first thing I'd like to do is talk about the various stages of sleep. You've got your light sleep. You've got your deep sleep, and everybody's favorite, REM sleep, where dreams take center stage. So picture this. You've just crawled under the covers, your eyelids are heavy with the promise of slumber, and as you drift off into dreamland, your brain begins its nightly routine, cycling through a series of distinct sleep stages like a well-choreographed ballet. First up, we have stage one sleep, also known as light sleep. Now this is the transition phase between wakefulness and slumber, where your brain waves start to slow down and your muscles begin to relax. Now stage one sleep is like the dipping of your toes into the pool of dreams, a gentle introduction to the world of sleep where you might experience those quirky sensations like hypnotic jerks or sudden muscle twitches. Next comes stage two sleep, where things start to get a little more serious. Now, during this stage, your brain waves continue to slow down and your body temperature drops just a little bit as you sink deeper and deeper into the realm of sleep. Now, stage two sleep is characterized by the appearance of sleep spindles and K complexes, which are brief bursts of electrical activity in the brain that help consolidate memories and protect against external disturbances. But wait, there's more. When you thought you just couldn't get any weirder along the realm of sleep, along comes stage three sleep, known as deep sleep or slow wave sleep. This is the holy grail of restorative rest, where your brain waves take a deep dive into the slow wave territory. During stage three sleep, your body undergoes a series of important physiological changes, including muscle repair, hormone regulation, and immune system maintenance. It's kind of like hitting the reset button on your body's internal clock, ensuring that you wake up feeling refreshed and rejuvenated. But hold on to your pillows because we're not done yet. Last, but certainly not least, we have REM sleep, the crown jewel of the stages of sleep. REM, which stands for rapid eye movement, is where the magic actually happens, or should I say, where the dreams actually happen. During REM sleep, your brain becomes a bustling metropolis of activity, resembling a Las Vegas strip at midnight. Your eyes are darting back and forth, back and forth beneath your closed eyelids, and your brain fires off neurons like fireworks on the 4th of July with lots of activity. It's during REM sleep that you're treated to a front row seat to the magical world of dreams, as your brain constructs elaborate narratives and surreal landscapes that defy the laws of physics and logic. Now, one of the things I find most absolutely fascinating about sleep is the fact that we have these vivid dreams involving motion, running, jumping, all kinds of scenarios. We've all had crazy dreams but we don't physically move very much during dreams. In other words, we're thinking about our arms moving, but our arms are generally not moving, or if they are, they're not moving very much. Now, this is an area of very active scientific research. We, we definitely don't have all of the answers, but basically, in REM sleep, whenever you're doing the act of dreaming, your body is effectively paralyzed, and so it prevents your muscles from moving. Or if they do move, it's, it's just a turnover or a twitch. It's not a full-on motion. Now. Presumably, this is to keep us all safe during our dreams. If you were dreaming about running and you were moving your legs in your sleep, I mean, you could actually hurt yourself while you were essentially unconscious. So this is an evolutionary thing that's developed to keep us safe. But exactly how does it happen is something that we don't know all of the answers. 
But there is recent research that have identified a couple of different neurotransmitters in your brain. Neurotransmitters are the chemicals released that help the neurons fire, or I should say, to facilitate the firing of the neurons. So as we think about running and jumping, we have neurons firing, triggering other neurons all the time. During our REM sleep, there's a neurotransmitter that is secreted into our brain that actually prevents these types of neurons from firing, the ones that move our muscles. There are other chemicals as well, too, that, that work outside of the brain to keep our muscles from moving. Moving, it's not one chemical that we can just isolate. It's several of them working in concert that have recently been discovered that keep us from moving. Now you might say, why do we care about all of this? Well, actually, there's a thing called sleep paralysis that has happened to many people. It's happened to me once as well. It turns out that if you're in this very deep level of sleep, this REM sleep, you're dreaming very, very vividly, you're very, very relaxed, right? And these chemicals have been secreted to keep your body from moving. If you wake up immediately, like maybe a bolt of like a thunderclap, or I don't know, you're scared, you're fearful, someone comes into the room very, very quickly, and you sit up, and you come out of the dream state. Your brain immediately wakes up and goes into more active state. However, your body is still paralyzed. So I don't know about you, but it's happened to me before, and it's absolutely terrifying if you wake up and you can see you know, the room around you, but you can't move. And for a few minutes or however long it lasts, usually a few seconds, it's actually terrifying to try to move your body and to not be able to move it. That's called sleep paralysis. Now that's happened to me once or twice my entire life, maybe three times my entire life. But there are people out there that this actually affects them almost daily or weekly. It's, it's terrifying actually. And so if you are suffering from this, then clinical research to figure out exactly how our bodies are paralyzed and what chemicals do it to develop medicines to kind of prevent or mitigate sleep paralysis can be absolutely life-changing for those that are afflicted with it. And it's a similar story for sleepwalking as well. This isn't a whole video on sleepwalking, but basically in various stages of sleep, you can actually be active but yet still asleep and you can get out of bed and move around. That's never really happened to me before, but there are lots of people that suffer from sleepwalking. It's actually really, really dangerous to be walking around while you're essentially unconscious or unable to have cognitive higher level thinking. So medicines and other treatments for people suffering from that could be a result of this kind of research. And there you have it, folks, the four stages of sleep in all their glory, from the gentle whispers of light sleep to the wild adventures of rim dreams, each stage plays a vital role in keeping our minds and bodies in perfect harmony. So the next time you climb into bed and drift off into dreamland, take a moment to appreciate the intricate dance of sleep stages unfolding inside of your brain. Now let's take a minute and back up the truck a bit and talk in a little more detail about brain waves. What exactly are brain waves anyway? We always hear about it, what are they? I want you to think of them as a rhythmic pattern of electrical activity and pulses throughout your brain, sort of like waves crashing onto the shore. Now these electrical signals are produced by billions of neurons firing in sync, creating kind of like a symphony of activity that can be measured and recorded using specialized equipment such as an electroencephalogram, or EEG for short. But here's where things get really interesting. Brain waves come in different shapes and sizes, and each of them have their own unique frequency and amplitude. It's kind of like tuning into different radio stations, each broadcasting its own distinct rhythm and melody. So let's break it down, shall we? We've got four main types of brain waves, each associated with a different state of consciousness and cognitive function. First up, we have delta waves, the slowest and deepest brain waves of them all. Delta waves are like deep bass notes of a symphony, signaling that you're in the deepest stages of sleep or experiencing profound relaxation. Next on the list are called theta waves, which are associated with very light sleep and meditation, creative thinking, and things of this nature. Theta waves are kind of like the gentle hum of a hummingbird's wings fluttering softly as your mind drifts off into a state of tranquility. Moving right along, we have alpha waves, which are produced when you're awake, but also relaxed, like during meditation or daydreaming. Alpha waves are kind of like the soothing melody of a lullaby, calming your mind and soothing your soul. Now, last but not least, we have beta waves, the fastest and most energetic brain waves of them all. Beta waves are kind of like the frenetic beat of a drum, signaling that your brain is firing on all cylinders and ready to tackle whatever challenges come its way. 
But wait, there's more. There's a bonus wave here, which we haven't talked about yet. It's called the gamma wave. It's associated with higher cognitive functions such as learning, memory, and problem solving. Gamma waves are kind of like the sparkling fireworks of the brain, illuminating pathways of thought and understanding. This is what will be happening if you're taking an algebra exam or in deep thought about how to solve a problem. So the next time you find yourself lost in thought or drifting off to sleep, remember that your brain is like a symphony orchestra, producing a symphony of electrical activity that shapes your conscious experience and defines who you are. But why do we actually need sleep anyway? Well, aside from giving us the opportunity to star in our own blockbuster dreams, sleep plays a critical role in keeping our bodies and minds in tip-top shape. You see, while you're busy counting sheep in your dreams, your brain is actually really hard at work. It's consolidating memories, processing emotions, and even flushing out toxins that accumulate during your waking hours. Have you ever wondered why you feel so foggy-headed after a sleepless night? Well, you can blame it on the lack of shut-eye or sleep, which disrupts your brain's ability to clear out the waste products and charge its batteries. All right, so get ready to have your minds blown because we're about to dive into one of the brain's best kept secrets. How does it clear the toxins in our brain while we sleep? It's kind of like spring cleaning for the mind, but way cooler and absolutely essential. I want you to picture this. While you're snug as a bug in a rug catching those Zs, your brain is hard at work performing a magical cleanup job for you to get ready and refreshed for the next day. You see, during sleep, your brain cells shrink ever so slightly. They actually shrink a little bit, creating extra space between the cells for cerebrospinal fluid to flow through and flush out toxins that accumulate during waking hours. I wanna say that again because it's absolutely mind-blowing to me, and it's based on research over the last few decades. When you sleep, it's not just that you're getting rest because your muscles aren't moving. Your brain is literally flushing itself of toxins that accumulate during the day. During the day, there are toxins that build up, and during the night, they are literally swept away by a fluid flowing in between the cells. Now, to make this happen, the neurons actually shrink a little bit, creating extra space between them and allowing a fluid, cerebrospinal fluid, to flow through and flush them out. So we can actually see this on modern brain scanning equipment, and it's kind of like an amazing thing to think about, that not only are you just dreaming to rest and relaxing your muscles to rest, but your actual brain is sort of like cleaned and flushed clean throughout the night and that helps you get ready for the next day's activities. One of the key players in this process is a protein called amyloid beta, which has a tendency to clump together and form sticky plaques in the brain, kind of like a stubborn stain on your favorite shirt. But fear not, my fellow sleepers, because when you hit the hay, when you fall asleep, your brain kicks into high gear, producing a surge of cerebrospinal fluid that washes and flushes this beta amyloid away and other toxic plaques that accumulate during the day like a powerful tide flowing through your brain. It's kind of like hitting the reset button on your brain's internal hard drive, clearing out the clutter and leaving behind a clean slate ready for the next day. But here's where things get even more fascinating. Studies have shown that sleep deprivation can disrupt this delicate process, allowing toxins to accumulate and wreak havoc on your brain. That's right, if you're burning the midnight oil and you're skimping on your sleep, you could be setting yourself up for a whole host of cognitive problems down the line, from memory loss to increased risk of neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's. So the next time you're tempted to pull an all-nighter or sacrifice sleep for the sake of productivity, just remember your brain needs its beauty rest too. But fear not, my fellow insomniacs, there are plenty of ways to optimize your sleep environment and set the stage for a night of sweet dreams. Try to create a cozy bedtime routine and banish electronic devices from the bedroom. It's important to set a routine and stick to it. So the next time you find yourself tossing and turning in the wee hours of the morning, just remember this. Sleep is your body's best friend, and it's always there to give you the rest and relaxation that you need to tackle the day ahead. So there you have it, folks. Sleep isn't just for catching Zs, it's for giving your brain a much needed spa day and cleaning out those pesky toxins. Remember, the next time you're tempted to burn the midnight oil, think twice and give your brain the beauty rest it deserves. After all, a well-rested brain is a happy brain, and who doesn't want a happy brain anyway? Until next time, sleep tight, 
Don't let the bed bugs bite, and may your dreams be as wild as a rodeo clown on roller skates. This is Jason signing off, encouraging you to snooze softly, keep calm, and science on. Stay curious. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.